Sony has screwed themselves royally. Square Enix has now turned around and said, no more, no more exclusives for Sony. They're going everywhere, which is absolutely amazing, especially in the world where Sony was sitting there trying to pressure other countries for signing up PlayStation Network, all because they want to control everything. Well, that's not gonna happen anymore. They're losing their cash cow of Square Enix. Maybe Final Fantasy VII, the third rendition, actually will come out on PC on launch day. And maybe we will see a lot more games that belong on PC than instead of the Sony PlayStation 5. Well, this is a pretty big story that broke today. Square Enix is done with PlayStation exclusivity after profit drop. Hmm, I wonder what's going on. You remember back when I reported on how Final Fantasy VII was not selling very well? How I said Stellar Blade will probably have a decrease in sales because it's on the PlayStation? How things on the PlayStation just don't do any good. And part of it is Sony's own fault. Sony sat there and screwed the market with the PlayStation 5, allowing people to sculpt the, the consoles because of them putting out very little of the consoles. There wasn't enough console out there for demand, so people just said, forget it. I'm not playing on PlayStation 5. I'm not going there. And now Square Enix is suffering a lot of that, but Sony completely screwed the pooch. Now, before we get fully into it, please do me a favor, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It's the one thing you can do for yourself right now is to subscribe to this channel and come back tomorrow by hitting the notification bell today. Square Enix wants an open relationship. Even though Square Enix and Sony partnership goes back years, something has to change for the publisher. It has realized and it is in includes getting its biggest games outside of the reach of a single console. You remember when Squaresoft was a Nintendo product and then Sony scooped them up and they, they came out with Final Fantasy 7, Final Fantasy 8, Final Fantasy 9 on the PS1 at the time where the console wars mattered. Now the console wars don't matter because they, the PC gaming market has evolutioned in such a way that the consoles don't make a difference anymore. You can buy a mini PC, a very small PC for about $400 that can run all the games that you ever really want out there. You want to run Minecraft and not have to go out there and buy a Sony PlayStation 5? Then go buy a mini PC because you can do many more things with it. There's many vlogs out there that can point you in the right directions for these things. And it's absolutely amazing. You don't need a giant tower like this anymore to run games. And that is where the suffering of the PlayStation 5, their price point is too high. The console is just, it's not been marketed very well and it's just dragging the entire company down. In its latest earnings re release, Square Enix reports a profit drop of 69.7% year over year. That is huge. For a giant release of Final Fantasy VII coming out, uh, the Rebirth, and in Final Fantasy XVI as well, that does not bode well. Final Fantasy XVI was one of the better selling games on the Sony PlayStation 5, and they still saw an almost 70% drop in revenue year after year. Now, I take this with a grain of salt, but I'm going to say, look at this, what I'm saying here, look back at my Baldur's Gate 3 video where I said the financials don't make sense, where I said that, they are, that Hasbro is screwed because this is what they're looking at when it comes to the fall catalog for Hasbro. This August, you're going to see an absolute death kneel of Hasbro. And Square Enix right now is showing you where you're headed right now. And that unfortunately stems all the way back to Baldur's Gate 3. Everyone that sat there telling me that I'm wrong on that video, wait until August and you're going to sit there and see the true colors of what happened. Yes, it's not a Sony PlayStation 5 situation, but they have nothing to replace it 
That's the difference here. Uh, thanks in part to an MMO and mobile declines and also growing operation losses from high dev cost amortization, even if sales are up slightly, but the company has made to it clear it plans to make the most of those high development costs with releases on more platforms. Here, Here's the thing. If you are running a game and you are running a budget of $200 million, $300 million, you cannot be expected exclusive to make that money back if you say i'm running a 300 million dollar game and it is only going to be on the playstation 5 that 600 price point to a thousand price point just to walk in the door to look at the game at a hundred dollars it doesn't work out the math doesn't make sense and this is why you're seeing things plummet Square Enix will aggressively pursue a multi-platform strategy that includes Nintendo platforms, PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. Many of Square Enix's biggest games have been locked in one platform partner partnership, like last year's Final Fantasy 16 and this year's Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, both on a single system. I swear I never read ahead here. Even if the console is very popular, the uh, Square Enix now fully understands they cannot limit themselves to the strategy, no matter what kind of relationship they had with Sony. You spend $200 million on a video game, you sell it on, uh, on the PlayStation 5, and you only sell $600 million worth of that game you've put yourself in this box you can't do that and expect to make your money back properly you if you're spending 200 million dollars on a game you should be looking at two billion dollars in sales that that it should be times 10 is pretty much what it should be not times two at that value you could easily spend 50 million on a game times that by 10 and then you suddenly have 500 million sure if you do that, it makes sense on a PlayStation exclusive game. But if you're spending 200 million, 300 million, you gotta be looking at two to three billion dollars in return. It's absolutely asinine to think otherwise. While the concept of game exclusivity is not going away, essentially everyone in the industry understands that limiting releases to a, just a single console in the face of ballooning development costs and the pursuit of live revenue is a poor idea. Microsoft has been on its play anywhere kick for a while with day and day release on PC and cloud gaming everywhere. Now Sony is trying to expand to PC release plan as well, which has been running into a few hiccups, namely the PlayStation Network requirements to even do that. Microsoft doesn't require you to do any of that. Sure, you kind of have to log into Microsoft Windows in order to do that, or you have to log into Steam to have access to your account, but it, it, it's not as evasive as the PlayStation Network version of it is. Almost no other publishers, Activision, EA, Take-Two, Ubisoft, were doing what Square Enix was doing with the huge third-party releases for one platform like PlayStation, but no more. Well, honestly, you spend billions or millions of dollars expecting billions of dollars in return, and you're putting yourself in a box on the console war. It doesn't work out. If you're not releasing on all consoles, if you're not releasing it everywhere, and you're just sitting there going, okay, Sony's offering me an extra $100 million if I keep it exclusive to them but your sales drop off by 10 times. It's not even worth it at that point. Don't go exclusive, don't. No matter what you do at this pay in pace, do not go exclusive because it will tank your company in the long run. Pretty much right now, this is go Sony, go broke because that's where Square Enix really is. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm your product thinking Phoenix Cine Shadow signing off here. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you again very soon.